welcome to Scrambler Division B. This is going to be an event supervisor video and explaining how to run the event. First, Scrambler is an impound event. So students are required before the first time slot to impound everything. That includes their launcher, their falling mass, their vehicle, uh, any spare parts must be impounded. So once impound is over, and that's the start of the first time slot, that is when the target distance is announced. Uh, for that, okay, then once it is time to compete, you will call students in to compete and everything else and escort them to go get their devices out of impound. They will bring everything they've impounded back to the event table, and we generally have a check-in table. At the check-in table, the first thing you're going to be doing is their, their mass. Basically, their falling mass must be weighed and everything else, and this is where you need to provide a scale that you'll end up then recording that. Now again, this is not, they were supposed to have it detached. The string and everything else doesn't really matter. It's really just the falling mass itself that has to be weighed. All right, and then after that, you wanna check their vehicle. And the biggest thing you're after on this one is their backstop. This has to be a wooden backstop this year. You wanna double check some dimensions on it, make sure the dowel rods are correct, the width are right, everything on that backstop you wanna go through. So once you've completed that, then you also want to ask them questions about who built the device, you know, any questions on that. Again, they just had to be verbal answers. There's no physical proof required. They just need to verbally explain that they built the device. Okay. Once they've completed that, now what they would do is you as the event supervisor must provide eggs as in the rule book. So you provide those and the students are able to select an egg. And this is just a standard grade eight egg. Uh, here we have ours in our Humpty Dumpty preventer to prevent it from breaking. So this is like where a student has selected an egg. So at this point, the student has selected that and everything else and picked it. Now, generally, after they do check-in, they wait for a track to open up. And so let's talk about the track really quick. So when they move to the track, there is just a start point on the floor that has, we recommend posting a sign with the distance. Don't verbally say the distance because there could be a miscommunications. Posting it like this, and you can point to that, there's no chance of miscommunicating what the distance is. Then the track is also required to have a backstop. Down at the far end, you can see we have a backstop here and everything else, and we put a series of weights behind it to make sure the backstop stays in position and does not move. So. Once they move to the track, this is where they'd bring their launcher, they would bring their weight or their vehicle, their falling mass, all this equipment would be brought over here, including their egg. And generally, I always recommend students to have a, something to protect their egg so it doesn't break. Okay, so once they have it over here, you basically explain it to them, hey, you'll get eight minutes, two runs, you know, they get through in that eight minutes, at which point they start their time. They don't attach the egg until their eight minutes starts. And once their eight minutes starts, they attach it. Now, in the rules, it says as the event supervisor, you have to provide the tape for them to attach the egg. So in that case, we just usually recommend a painter's tape, something simple like that. So, all right, so if I actually get some help to attach the egg real quick. So Corey, if you could help hold the egg in place, as the event supervisor, this is where they attach it. Now, you wanna make sure when they attach it is when they put it on here, either providing the tape, it goes on this so that the, is on here, what's very important is the back of the egg must be touching the backstop. And also, there's no tape on the front and no tape on the back, one centimeter of this. That is the student's responsibility and that is, again, something you don't point out while they're putting it on. That is their responsibility. They read the rules. If they send it down the track without that, that is a competition violation. And you can notify them after the run that they made a mistake. So once they've got that, now the team is still on there eight minutes. They're supposed to set it up. This is where they were attached to the weight. We're not going to quite do everything here. But they would launch the vehicle in here, get it all set up. So it would be inside this ready to go. It's like they are supposed to require to have the tip of the egg over the start point. And this is where this is supposed to be directly over the top of that. Okay, this is the student's responsibility. If they don't have that, that is a competition violation that you notify them after the run. Now, 
Once they get it all set and everything else, they've got the weight on here. This is where when they tell you they're ready to run, you stop the clock. You say, okay, please back away from the vehicle. And we end up doing dimension checks. The dimension checks are very important in what we call the ready to run configuration. This is sort of ready to run. The vehicle is ready to launch. So you need to include that egg and everything. The other thing is underneath their falling mass is very important. Steal this. They're supposed to have some kind of padding underneath this that prevents their falling mass from hitting the floor. Their falling mass cannot contact the floor. If it falls down and gets the unlucky bounce and comes over here, that is contact of the floor. So they gotta end up having the padding. And as per the rules, that padding is part of the dimension. So when you're measuring the length of this, it is from that tip of the egg in this example to where that foam is. Okay, and that is the student's responsibility to get that in. If there are any issues with this, this is again, per the rules, they are notified after the run. They get two runs, so if they have anything wrong, they have the second run to fix it. Okay, so once they get the vehicle all in the ready to run configuration, you've done your checks, you've done all the measurements, everything you've recorded on the checklist. Now you let the students that it's okay to start because you would make sure you have your timers ready, everybody's all set, and they start it with a number two pencil. When they run it down the track, you go down and take a measurement. Okay, so next is when the vehicle comes to a stop, you need to take a distance measurement. And this is a point-to-point -point measurement. So this is where we end up, we recommend a lot of times bringing a little square in here so you can mark on the ground. A little, we usually put a piece of paper or tape down here at the bottom showing where that's at. And then we would take a measurement from here to here, okay? The other thing is, this is an event if they break the egg. So if they come in too hot and everything else and smash and break, one of the other things is confused. They broke their egg, well, no, that's still a successful run. What you would end up doing is measuring from where the egg contacted across this. So if it's up against it like it broke, it is a point to point because there's a penalty they get for breaking the egg. And again, if they break the egg in the first run, there is no second run. So again, remember, do not touch a student vehicle, do not handle a student's vehicle. Always ask them to pick it up. Now when they come down here and their vehicle is stopped, this is where you know you tell them, it's like you've done your measurements, you have everything, you've asked them to pick them up. Once they pick up the vehicle, then their eight minute track time continues. You restart it at that point. So, and they would get a second run as long as they have not broken the egg. Okay, so when their vehicle comes down the track, the first time it comes down, after that point, if they break the egg for any reason, just handling the car, they do not get a second egg. They only get a second egg beforehand. 